Hello, my dear students. I'm Dr. Vaishali Bharambe, Professor Anatomy. I'm going to teach you how to draw the microscopic structure of cartilage. You must follow this series, which will teach you how to draw histodigrams in your journals as well as in your exams. Let's begin. Cartilage, as you know, is a specialized connective tissue. If it's a connective tissue, it must contain cells and extracellular matrix. With cells, chondrocytes. What is extracellular matrix made up of? It's made up of fibers and ground substance. Which fibers are we talking about? Collagen type 2, elastic and collagen type 1. Accordingly, there are three types of cartilage. Highline cartilage, elastic cartilage and fibro cartilage. Just remember that highline mainly contains type 2 collagen. Elastic mainly contains elastic fibers and of course type 2 collagen. Fibrocartilage mainly contains type 1 and of course type 2 collagen fibers. So let's begin to draw the first diagram. Students, take your H&E pencils and begin to draw one chondrocyte, another chondrocyte. See how the chondrocytes lie adjacent to each other, but the places where they are adjacent to each other, they are flattened. Okay. One more and one more. Now color them up. Okay, so a lightly stained cells arranged in the form of groups. Draw their nucleus. Remember the nucleus is quite dense. Okay, so it's more heterochromatic than euchromatic. Always give a little attention to these tiny details. It makes you feel good and makes you understand the topic better. So, these, this kind of arrangement of chondrocytes is called as a cell nest. Okay. The next thing we do is add a few cellular contents. Right. Now, use your hematoxylin pencil and begin to color the area immediately around the cell dark. Okay. You can see that I am leaving a little space here. This space is called as lacuna. As the cell shrinks during processing, it leaves, there's a little gap there. Cells do exist inside such spaces called lacunae. Now, this immediately darker colored area is called as a capsular matrix. Darken it up. Now, let's stain the ground substance around it. This is called as the territorial matrix. Immediately around the chondrocytes, the ground substance stains dark. Okay, And this is called as the territorial matrix. Now, let's add some more. Add a lighter stain around this. This is called as the interterritorial matrix. Okay, So, now see, you have drawn uh, the chondrocytes, you have drawn the capsular matrix, the territorial matrix, the interterritorial matrix. Okay, And this together is referred to as a cell nest. And there you have the diagram with its labels. Remember this isogenous cell group or cell nest is the basis of our next part of our learning and therefore knowing how to draw this is very very essential for you. The cartilage we are drawing now is our highline cartilage. Let's begin to draw the perichondrium first. Okay, So, draw your perichondrium. These are fibroblasts present within the perichondrium. Perichondrium is quite fibrous. It covers the hyaline cartilage. Within it, therefore, you will have fibroblasts. As you come inside towards the hyaline cartilage, you start to find slightly elongated cells. These are chondroblasts. So, draw your chondroblasts as well. Stain them. Okay. Remember, these are the chondroblasts which will create more cartilage and therefore, the growth of hyaline cartilage occurs by what is called appositional growth. So, there you have your perichondrium, outer fibrous layer, inner cellular layer. Now, let's draw what we already know. Draw your cell nests, sometimes in twos, sometimes in threes, sometimes in fours as we have learnt earlier. Draw your cells. Remember to draw adjacent sides flattened. Now stain all the cells. Okay, there you've got your chondrocytes. Now, of course, we'll add the nuclei. 
add your nuclei, have patience, color the nuclei. So now you already know the next step is to draw your capsular matrix. So take an hematoxylin pencil and begin to draw your capsular matrix. Make sure you are drawing it nice and dark. Right. So what is our next step now? Next step is to draw your territorial matrix. So the dense ground substance which is surrounding each cell nest. Draw it well. This is an important part of our diagram. So these are cell nests surrounded by territorial matrix. Now the next step is to add the interterritorial matrix which is lighter staining. Make sure you keep the homogeneity intact. Nowhere should any kind of fibrous element appear. So this is the highline cartilage, the perichondrium, the outer fibrous layer containing fibroblasts, inner chondrogenic layer containing chondroblasts. It is these chondroblasts which will proliferate and differentiate to form the underlying cartilage. Here you can see the chondrocytes. You can see how they are lying within lacunae. As you go closer towards the center of the cartilage, you can see the size of the chondrocytes is becoming larger as the chondrocytes become more mature. Surrounding the chondrocyte, you can see a capsular matrix. It is a very dense staining matrix surrounding individual cell. Surrounding groups of cells, you have a dense staining territorial matrix and in between territorial matrix, you've got inter-territorial matrix. So that is highland cartilage. You must remember that the tissue between the cells is very homogeneous. Your diagram must reflect that. Okay. Highline is a word that means glassy. So see how the appearance must look glassy. Examples of highline cartilage, costal cartilage and articular cartilage. We will now move on to elastic cartilage. Now let's draw the elastic cartilage. Just like the highline cartilage, we are first drawing the perichondrium. Observe how the perichondrium is again having a fibrous layer containing fibroblasts and an inner cellular layer containing the chondroblasts. So please draw these. Now let's enter into the elastic cartilage itself. Begin to draw your chondrocytes. So they are in cell groups of twos, threes. Towards the center, you may find cell nests of four as well. Cells appear quite large and well defined. Now let's stain the cells. What is the next step? The next step is to draw the capsular matrix. Remember to draw it deep and well defined. While you are drawing your capsular matrix, remember to leave a gap which is the lacuna. So the chondrocytes, like in case of highland cartilage, again lie inside a space called lacuna. The next step is to draw the territorial matrix which will surround the cell groups. So draw the deep staining territorial matrix. Now the next step is to draw the pale staining interterritorial matrix. By now you must be thinking that this is very much similar to the highline cartilage and you will not be wrong in thinking so. What then is the difference? Again this is looking very much like an highline cartilage but the difference lies in the fact that in this space which is homogeneous space in between the chondrocytes, you will now begin to see elastic fibers. Come. So begin to draw these elastic fibers. So does it mean there is only elastic fiber in between? No. There, there are also collagen type 2, which as is the rule blend in with the matrix. But the elastic fibers, especially if stained separately, can be clearly visualized and that is why we call this as an elastic cartilage. Let's now draw and color the nuclei.
there you have your elastic cartilage. Let's quickly label it now. This is the perichondrium containing chondroblasts in the inner cellular layer and fibroblasts in the perichondrium, outer fibrous layer. These are the chondrocytes existing inside the lacuna. Surrounding chondrocytes, the capsular matrix. Surrounding cell groups, the territorial matrix. Between territorial matrix, pale staining interterritorial matrix. And the entire matrix shows presence of which fibers? Elastic fibers. This is the elastic cartilage. Finally, let's draw the fibrocartilage. So what is fibrocartilage? Basically, fibrocartilage is a, it's like a dense fibrous tissue. Remember, it has no perichondrium. It basically contains type 1 collagen fibers arranged in the form of such bundles. Remember, bundles branch, individual fibers do not branch. Arrange your collagen type 1 in the form of such bundles. Leave little bit space in between. Can you see how I am leaving space in between? In this space, begin to draw your chondrocytes. This time the difference is that chondrocytes lie in the form of a row. So draw rows of chondrocytes. There are of course much fewer chondrocytes compared to highline or elastic cartilage. In between collagen fibers, don't forget to draw fibroblasts. Now color the cells, draw the nuclei. Finally, remember to stain the tissue. And there you have a diagram of fibrocartilage. Let's label it now. So, note the absence of perichondrium in fibrocartilage. These are chondrocytes which are arranged in spaces between the branching collagen type 1 fibers. They are arranged in the form of single rows. These are type 1 collagen fibers and in between them you can see such tiny fibroblasts. So this is fibrocartilage. So where do you find fibrocartilage? You will typically find it in areas where cartilage needs to be exceptionally strong and resilient. Think intervertebral disc, think pubic symphysis. What about elastic cartilage? See, elastic cartilage is typically found in areas that requires the cartilage to be very flexible. For example, pinna of the ear, epiglottis. So that's it for cartilage students. I'll see you in my next video where we will discuss and draw the histology of some other organ or tissue. Thanks for watching. Bye.